Alright, so finally got a day off, or an evening off of work, so it's time to make some videos. Let's start with the patch notes. It is, what is today? September 20th, uh, 2023. Tomorrow's Thursday, which means it's patch day. It is a, an off-cycle patch, meaning that it is the second week of a new banner. I call that off-cycle patches. So, uh, as such, we usually don't get a whole lot of stuff with these patch notes but let's go over and see all right let's turn my camera on there we go okay let's dive right in as a uh, donkey punch would say i'm blah 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 500 diamonds right you guys know the deal version update details for the 21st of september so new events and event optimizations uh, a new wishlist recruitment event, the Divine Blessing. Okay, so this confirms that they're going to do a wishlist banner every four weeks because uh, we had, uh, I can't remember what the first one was recently, but then another one came six weeks later, and then another one came four weeks later, and then I was waiting for this one to confirm it. It, it feels like they're going to be doing this every four weeks because there's so many triple S in the game that if they don't do a wishlist banner, they're just never going to get back around and it's the gap in between heroes releases are just going to get longer and longer and longer or larger right so they have to do these wishlist banners more often which is good the, the the problem with that is is though like for free to play they only got so many limited tickets so anyway anyway it's still a good thing it's a catch-up mechanism but still a good thing so a new wishlist banner uh will be open on some servers that means uh after server so you have to be in week four, not week three. You have to be in week four or later. Uh, during the event, you'll have a chance to recruit triple S heroes, Fiona, Rickert, and Jaina. So all of these are good heroes. Fiona is what broke the hunters. That's what made them able to just blow through all the content in the game and be the, the best team in Eternal Evolution. Uh, and you on that team, you have to have Rickert. So I have Fiona at like, I think she's Immortal 2. I have record at Immortal 5. I'm not going for them. But then we got Jaina. So now Jaina is the queen of very... She is basically a paper cannon, right? She is a super DPS, huge numbers if you get her up to X30 and geared right. But she's squishy. So I'm probably going to be going for Jaina uh, because I don't... You know, Fiona, Fiona's a support. You kind of get everything you need out of Fiona from just getting her to Immortal and unlocking her X30. Rickert, again, like I said, I got I got Rickert at MO5. Uh, elite heroes, we don't we don't care about elite heroes. If you were though just starting out in the game, um, Oak will help you, Kane will help you, and Loran will help you if you're very, very early, because after week four, you're gonna have Serena and you're gonna have Masrani. Uh, I guess you won't have body yet if you're brand new. So Loran, you you still need three healers or three sub three healing support units uh, early on. So all of those are good for, for new players. And you will be guaranteed to receive a wishlist hero every 60 limited recruitment. So if you don't know, if this is your first time doing a wishlist banner, how it works is you pick one of the three, Fiona, Rickert, or Jaina, and that becomes your goal hero, the, the one you want. So you will get a guaranteed copy of that hero at the 60th pull, and then every subsequent 60th pull. Now, if you pull that hero on the 20th pull, then it resets the pity, goes back to 60. Um, but if you pull, say, if you favorite uh, Jaina as your wish list, and you pull a Rickards on the 20th pull, it doesn't reset the pity. You just got to pull 40 more and you get a Jaina. And at the same time, they have increased rates at every 30 pull. So right now in the game, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a purple every 30. That doesn't mean it's going to be a triple S. Usually it's just an elite. Um, for the wishlist banners, usually the triple S have higher drop rates and they drop more fre frequently at the 30 demarcation points. Okay. All right. So good stuff. 
Uh, event, seven days, right? And then return to giant tower. I called this one. I actually called the wish list too, but I didn't call uh, Jaina. I got pretty damn close. A new return to giant tower event will open on some servers. The main rewards of this event are changed to Fiona copies. Okay. So, you got Fiona in your wish list. You got Fiona in giant tower. If you do not have her to immortal yet, you're probably going to want to go for Fiona. Unless you really need a Jaina or unless you, whatever, get who you need, who you have, or, or who's closest to immortal. But Fiona is that good and she works outside of Vanguard and uh, Assassin teams. So how the giant tower works is you have to pull 80 limited tickets to get your first free copy. So if you were to say pick, let's just for, for simplicity's sake, on the wish list you pick Fiona. Um, and... She's also in the giant tower, so you're gonna get, you're gonna get one guaranteed at 60, and then you're gonna get that free copy at your 80th pull from the giant tower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna pull 90 limited tickets since we know that we have that uh, collaboration event starting a week from tomorrow. I'm gonna pull 90 tickets. That's gonna guaranteed, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna pick Jaina. So what that's going to guarantee for me is that I'm going to get a Jaina at the 60th pull. And then at 80 tickets, I can get a free Fiona from Giant Tower. And then I'm pulling that last 10 to get 90 because that's a 30 mark. And that's an increased chance for me to get another triple S out of the wish list. So you are probably going to pull 80 anyway on a Giant Tower. Now um, you can pull 90 and just get more stuff. Or, you know, this is a perfect opportunity. If you got, if you really need all these heroes, you can just, like, buy a bunch of limited tickets. Or if you have a huge stash, just dump them into here. But keep in mind, we got, we do have that collaboration event coming up in a week. And we don't know what we're going to need to get the new heroes out of that event. So, if that's cool. Wish list, giant tower, all good stuff. I wonder if the music's too loud. Let's turn it down a little bit. Uh, and that's seven days. And then new Quantum Mimic on like clockwork uh it's gonna open on some servers again that means after server or after week three so week four the main rewards of this one are miranda copies and then the revitalization crystal so you're gonna get miranda who's a support and you're gonna get the support uh prototype now if you guys didn't know for these quantum mimics you can bank all of your stuff so if you don't want miranda or if you don't want an RNG chance, I should say, at Miranda or the revitalization, revitalization Crystal, you don't have to spend them. You can just bank them all up and wait till two weeks till the next one and then use it on that one if it has a better hero or a better prototype. So just letting you guys know in case I've never done that. I always, because I, I kind of want all the stuff associated with it. And I tend to have most of the stuff that's in these anyway, but... If you're just starting out, there's a little tip for you. You can save and hoard the resources for Quantum Mimics. Because they carry over. A new Galactic Bounty event will open on some servers. The main rewards of this event are changed to Daniel copies. Now, I always screw up these events. Because there's the Galactic Challenge. Which I do believe is the uh, Galactic Arena one. And then there's the big grid. Like the big like 12 by 12 grid. Or 6 by 12 grid. Or whatever it is. And then there's the 3x6 grid. I don't know which one it is. You're going to get rewards basically for free. This is a good event for, for everybody because you get good stuff. And you're either going to get... Um, the, you're going to get a Daniel copy nonetheless. I have Daniel at Immortal 5 already. Don't need him, but it's going to turn into some bright dismissal coins that I can use to buy astral tickets. Uh, and... If this is the one I think it is, then you're going to get some limited tickets... And you're going to get some advanced tickets. You're going to get just a bunch of resources, which is good. Event duration, 11 days. These ones go a little longer for some reason. It's a little little different. A little different. Uh, new Hero Rally is opening on all servers, I guess. Or not all servers, but most servers. Don't spend on this one. No. Do not spend on this Hero Rally because we don't know what we're going to need for the collaboration event. There has been a leak. Um, that we don't know what it pertains to exactly, but it does say it does kind of look like a hero rally type event where you have to spend advanced, limited, and collaboration currency. So don't spend on I'm just for this one, hoard. Just for this one, wait a week, let this one go by, 
It's not going to hurt you. I know if you've been, if you got a 1500 advance sitting in your, in your bag and you're like, I'm getting this prototype this, this week, just wait, just wait. Cause you could be really set up to get some stuff in this collaboration event, or you might not be. And then you just have to wait two weeks and then you can do it then. Right. You're not really missing out. Just hoard for this week. Don't spend on the hero rally. A new season of Summit Arena is opening, which is really weird. It is a week. It is more than a week late because it's not opening tomorrow on the 21st. It's opening on the 23rd. Event duration is still two weeks. Now, the Summit Arena usually launches when Endless Battle launches. We don't know why they pushed it back. What I'm assuming is there is currently a bug in Hell Arena. But that has to do more so with the four teams, right? Right. There's something weird going on there. I'm wondering if maybe that carried over to Summit Arena, and that's why they're pushing it back. I don't know, but it's it is really weird that they're it's it's launching not tomorrow, but on the 23rd, which is what tomorrow's that's on Saturday, and still running for two weeks. It, it's just odd. It's odd. But the uh, the bonus heroes are uh, Arca Arcadia, the new hunter, Fiona, and Sif, right? The the last three new heroes. I think that's the last three. No, because Ares was before Sif. So, that's cool. Hey, at least Caraxia is not in at this time, right? <laughs> Good deal. So, that's all the content that's coming. Not a whole lot. Wishless Banner, Giant Tower, Summit, and that's it. And this one, this Galactic Bounty event, right? So, game content adjustments and optimizations. Now, I'm not even going to waste your time with this. They're adding gold into the Wasteland Shop that my fr my baby, baby free-to-play that's in week three doesn't even need that. Nor would I want to waste my Wasteland coins to buy gold. I'm going to use it to buy a copy of a hero. And then by the time that I don't need those heroes, uh, I don't need gold. Uh, so, this is a miss. Swing and a miss on that one there, devs. This one, though, however, is fabulous. Adjusted some of the rewards for the Legendary Fighter rank and Hell Fighter rank in the Hell Arena. Added 200 blood-soaked name tags as a reward, that's the red ones, to Legendary Fighter rank reward. And increased the blood-soaked -so name tags in the rank reward for advancing to Hell Arena in each season from 200 to 300. So, a lot of people don't make Hell Fighter. Right? If you watch my recent collab with uh, Vet Aaron Gaming, he made it to Legendary Rank. So he missed out completely in Season 1 on these blood-soaked name tech rewards, which is what you need to buy all of the main rewards. Now, let's go over in-game real quick, because I want to show you guys exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. So, let's see... Hell Arena. So, the rewards. So, right now, if you end the season or end the week and you're in Legendary Fighter, you don't get any Blood Soak name tags. But now, you will. Um, it looks like you get 200 just for, just for placing in Legendary Fighter. And then, if you actually get promoted up to Hell Fighter, you get 300. Which a lot of people get promoted up and then they get knocked down and then they don't get any. <clears throat> they get the 200 blood soaked when they move up, but then they get nothing when they get knocked down. They actually get the legendary fighter rewards because it's it's your placement at the beginning of the week, not the end of the week, which is kind of weird because it wasn't like that for the last week of season one. But say you're in Hellfighter and you get demoted. You start in Legendary Fighter the following week and you get the Legendary Fighter payout. You don't get the Blood Soaked name tags. You only get these when you're moving up into Hellfighter, but not down from Hellfighter. Until today or tomorrow, where is you'll get, what is it, 200 for Legendary Fighter, which is nice because if we look at the rewards really quick, not that one, the shop really quick, you see that these, these big trophies, even though these ones kind of suck this season, they're worth 400. So if you place in Legendary Fighter two weeks in a row, you're going to be able to start picking up these red trophies, right? You're probably not going to get the big one, even though the big one sucks. Uh, but you can finally start uh, getting these uh, red trophies, which is really, really nice. Like, that is really... That's a, that's a perk that they didn't have to do. No one really asked for that. 
But that is really nice of the devs to do that. Now I'm thinking that they have all of the data from week or from season one, right? It was two months long. They have the data. They know how many of the player base got into Hellfighter, how many didn't, how many got blood soaked name tags, how many didn't. And I think they figured, okay, these things are just a little too exclusive. We got to give them, we got to make them more accessible. Now, devs, since you can do something like that, you can definitely make um, the astral tickets more available, even though, yes, we can use blood soak name tags to buy astral tickets from the Hell Arena shop, even though I don't do that. I might this month or this season because I'm starting higher rank, but we'll see, but um, not a good value. Okay, so that's that's really cool. Devs, golf clap, golf clap on that one. Good fix, good quality of life fix. That helps so many people keep up. You know, that's the kind of goodwill. That's the kind of stuff we need to see out of you. Stuff like this. And then bug fixes. Okay, I haven't read the bug fixes, so I don't know if there's actually anything uh, that is, like, groundbreaking here. Uh, fixed an adaption issue. No, don't care. Fix the issue that the saved filter loadout. Oh, yeah, I don't use, I don't save filters. I think that's for, uh, forging gear or looking for gear. Yeah, because, uh, filter loadout was not saved properly when the number of eligible se secondary slots was zero. Fix the issue with the equipment filtering function that when selecting the number of secondary stats. Yeah, okay. The, the, the new system that they implemented this week for looking for secondary stats on gear is 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 complex and is kind of broken and kind of stupid they're they're trying to fix that because i'm sure they've received a ton of feedback that says that why why did you do this you're just making it you made it harder for me to go look for substats versus now with your new system so they'll get it hammered out looks like they're starting to get it hammered out it'll get there eventually uh, and it looks like it's all that. Fix the issue where the, where the number of selected secondary stats are not displayed. Fix the issue that the ascending and descending order status on the right side was... Uh, what? Uh, oh, in batch forging. Uh, fix another issue with batch forging. Uh, fix the issue that the flame recommendation... Oh, Mark was not displayed on equipment with attack stats when being equipped by Katie. Okay, so that's the, like, here, this, you know, the little flame icon in the gear. It's like, this is good for your character. Uh, so they fixed that. That's good. Fixed an issue that Daniel's spatial seal skill miscounted the number of summons. Huh. Didn't know that was the thing. Fixed the issue that the offensive lineup would fail to save with a certain probability when attacking in the Hell Arena. Okay, so that is the current ongoing Hell Arena bug that is causing so many people grief. It looks like they're finally fixing it. So good. That, that you know, get on that, guys. And that's it. So this is a quick one. This is a really, really quick one. Somehow, though, I managed to talk for 18 minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, the TLDR of this patch notes is uh, Wishless Banner, Fiona, Rickert, and Jaina. Giant Tower with Fiona. Summit Arena starting on Saturday. Uh, Galactic Bounty, which we can get a free Daniel. And then you get a Miranda and a Revitalization Crystal from the Quantum Mimic. Again, we're waiting for next week. Next week's the big week. The big collab event. So, hold on to your butts. <laughs> uh, I'm not on call that week, so I will be here to cover it for you. So, stay tuned. Uh, I'll see you guys then. Until the next time we meet. That was a dumb thing to say. <laughs> Until next time, everybody. Cheers, peace. Bye-bye.